Hello, hello. Today I'm doing a tutorial for overclocking GTX 750 Ti and um, basically this is going to be a beginner's guide or if you just want some reassurance. Uh, so this is the video for you. There are three stages in overclocking. First of all, it's pre preparation, which means that you must make sure that you have sufficient time to do all this because uh, the overclocking itself doesn't take long. What takes long is stability testing, uh, which is the last stage. Basically, first stage is preparation, uh, second stage is overclocking, third stage is stability testing to make sure that your overclock is stable. So, in preparation, what you must do, you must download the latest driver for your graphics card and uh, the latest uh, software for your overclocking utility. In this case, it's MSI Afterburner for overclocking and Unigen Heaven Benchmark for uh, stressing GPU whilst you are doing the overclock. I will leave the links for, to download this, uh, this, this uh, software in the description below this video. And I will also show you how to set them up. So basically, to set up your MSI Afterburner, uh, you need to monitor for these four. I like to monitor these four things: is GPU temperature, uh, core clock, memory clock, and power. To do that, to set it up, you go into settings, monitoring, and if it's not at the top of the list, you simply go and uh, click, drag, and drop to. Uh, to move them to the top of the list and then put a tick next to them and uh, the, the, the top ones with the tick will appear in here. So as you can see, I've got tick, GPU, temperature, core, memory clock, power. Hit OK, it's gonna appear here. So it's all good. Fan speed, I'm gonna leave on auto because uh, Maxwell architecture is pretty cool and it GPU doesn't run hot even overclocked, so I'm gonna leave it on auto. It will not run hot at all. Right, uh, later on I will talk about tweaking the core voltage as well, so stay tuned if you are interested. Uh, another thing, if you are going to overvolt, uh, tweak the core voltage, you must make sure that you go into settings and enable this unlock voltage controls. So let's begin. Once you've got your MSI Afterburner and uh, Unigine Heaven Benchmark, uh, I've set it up to have medium quality, tessellation normal, and 2x anti-aliasing. Run it in windowed mode because on default it says full screen. You just uh, click here, uh, the, the remove the tick, hit run. Benchmark is starting. With Alt tab, you go and select your MSI Afterburner, put it in this corner here, And wait for the benchmark to load up. So, next thing you want to do is uh, start overclocking. Because the power limit is at 100% and can't go any further, uh, I'm gonna say in advance that we're going to run into a bottleneck here. I mean, not bottleneck. I mean, uh, what's the proper word for it? Basically, we're gonna hit the maximum. We're gonna hit the limit, and it's gonna become a problem. Uh, but we'll uh, cross that bridge when we come to it. So basically, first uh, what first thing I did here was first thing you want to do is uh, increase your memory clock, and you want to figure out what kind of steps are you going to take. I decided to take steps of 25. So basically, what I've done was I've increased it by 25 every step. So step one was 25. Increase it by 25, hit apply, and then you watch and then you watch this picture here for any signs of instability which will be shown as uh, visual artifacts, visual defects, uh, basically any textures flickering, uh, any uh, sort of strange colors, textures missing, dark spots or just all kinds of spots everywhere 
uh, as you can see there are some problems with shadows don't worry so basically what you want is you want to run your benchmark before you start the overclock uh, also you can take the reading from your um, your FPS to compare it to uh, after you've done the overclock compare the FPS how much you've gained so and also you need to run this benchmark before you start uh, to make sure that your GPU is not faulty to begin with right so basically memory clock if you take steps of 25 first step 25 if it's stable then you're ready to make the next step you increase it to 50 hit apply and then you watch this picture again for about 10 20 seconds for any signs of visual artifacts it is enough if it's okay make the third step and so on and so forth I was going slowly slowly increasing it increasing it and I found that my maximum apply, uh, overclock on the memory that I could do was 675 because if I was going any further than that I was running into any uh, un into unstable overclock and there were artifacts appearing how do you know what do you do when you run into that uh, basically if you are at 675 for example and then you go to make your next step to 700 and you hit apply and there are uh, artifacts everywhere what you must do is you know that you just need to take one step back you take one step back and that's your basically your stable well uh, supposedly stable overclock because it's not been stress test tested yet um, what I've done here is because 675 is a lot and we've got power limit here to watch out for so what I've done is was I've uh, decreased it to 500 and uh, hit apply and started increasing core clock I know some people say that you know you must do them separately and to find your maximum core clock separately but it doesn't really apply to this card because core can go pretty high and we're gonna run into problems with uh, power limit so what I've done was I've started increasing it in increments of 20 first step same as with memory clock you take the same steps and you watch uh, for 10 20 seconds for any signs of instability and you make those steps all the way until you reach your highest clock uh, that is running stably in my case I was running stable at 230 it was still stable but then I run into a uh, hit the maximum power basically uh, the core started jumping up up and down as you can see it's not boosting constantly it's 1445 then 1435 that means that uh, it is just not enough power going through to the GPU um, so that was my maximum and I left it at that about core voltage if you run into artifacts and signs of instability before you reach your uh, your power limit you, what you can do is you can increase your core voltage to uh, try and stabilize your core again and get rid of those artifacts and make uh, run uh, make it run stable again that is what the core voltage is used for uh, all right on this card it's only plus 31 millivolts in this utility so it's no big deal you can play around with it safely and um, basically try and increase it if it becomes unstable to make it stable again but I didn't have to and the last step is stress testing it so once you've done your overclock you can either run this benchmark for about I don't know maybe, maybe 20 minutes or so uh, to see if it crashes or if you, any artifacts appear um, or or what you can do is you can save your settings that you've achieved exit the benchmark 
Um, by the way, um, applying, uh, saving the settings goes like this. You can hit save and choose the profile. Also, don't use this apply overclocking at system startup until you are absolutely sure that your overclock is stable. So once you've uh, quit the uh, another way to go about it is uh, select your overclock and um, go and play a game. So basically you go into any game you want and start playing uh, as you would normally but just uh, you know keep your eyes out for any signs of instability in in form of visual artifacts that uh, I was talking about earlier. And that will be your stress testing. And that's the most time consuming thing because you can run for a few hours, no problem, and then suddenly, boom, it's unstable. So if you uh, see that it's unstable, you go back to your uh, to tweaking your core voltage. Uh, not, not core voltage, I mean, you can increase the core voltage if you have uh, room for it. Uh, but uh, alternatively you just take one step back on your core clock or your memory clock uh, try to do them both together basically you're gonna have to play around with them back and forth back and forth if you want to find your absolute maximum if you don't want to find your absolute maximum you can just choose a safe um, you can just uh, for example if it was maximum at two plus 230 here uh, pl and plus 600 here now you can just do something like 450 and 200 and be happy about it. Have that extra free performance anyway because plus 200 on the core is a lot. Um, you're gonna you're gonna see the difference. It's gonna be um, I don't know on your regular uh, settings if you were getting something like 40 to 45 FPS, you're probably gonna get 45 to 50 fps instead so that's you know considerable um, boost there but yeah uh, about the overclock uh, none of the gpus are the same so if you don't know silicon lottery rules apply you can google silicon lottery to learn more uh, about different batches of uh, chips and um, yeah so that's it Basically, this is the whole thing. Um, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see comparisons. I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison between uh, stock out-of-the-box performance for this card and compare it with the overclocked, uh, with the overclocked uh, version that I've done to see what the difference is. And of course, I always have more stuff coming out, uh, more videos different experiments so say stay tuned for that until next time rg out